Hey, hey y'all, and welcome to this week's What's for Dinner video. I have two family favorites and one new recipe to share with you. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, join our family, and give this video a thumbs up. All right, let's check out these recipes. If there's a recipe that takes me back to my childhood, it's this one right here. My mama's goulash, and it's so simple. You just need a pound of meat, tomato juice, elbow noodles, salt, and pepper. That's it. Brown up your meat. Now we're using venison. Mama always used ground beef, but if you need to drain any of the grease out, go ahead and do that, and then add in that whole jug of tomato juice and about a pound of elbow noodles. Mama always uses the large elbow noodles and there's just something about that. Maybe it's because Mama always uses the large. It just makes it extra, extra special. But I could not get any at the store this week. So we're using the regular size and it works fine. But if you can get the large elbows, that's what you need to get. But he had to take a peek in that pot. Go ahead and let this boil and let your noodles cook through. This right here is the consistency that you're looking for when your noodles are done then serve it up and enjoy. It's literally a three ingredient meal that tastes like home. This next recipe is one that I saw my friend Shasta at a Biting Farmhouse make. I think I changed it up just a little bit, but the concept is still the same. You need some stew meat, cream of mushroom, onion, and jasmine rice. We also used a little bit of milk. Easton is helping me out. I just trimmed up this meat and we got it in the crock pot. Then you're gonna see him put on some salt, pepper, and that chopped up onion. We used about two pounds of meat, and so we used two cans of cream of mushroom. We're emptying that out in a bowl and putting in about a fourth of a cup of milk and whisking that together, and then we'll pour that on top of our meat. Stir that around and cook it on low for about eight hours. With about 30 minutes left in the cook time, I stirred together a third of a cup of water and a heaping tablespoon of flour and poured that in to help thicken up the sauce. And about the same time, I got my rice cooking because we served this over rice. This is another meal with very few ingredients, but a whole lot of taste and the family really enjoyed it. And the last recipe is old fashioned meatloaf, the way we make it. This is Easton's absolute favorite meal. I'm using two pounds of ground beef. This is another meal you could definitely make with venison. If you're looking for venison recipes, you could split it half venison, half beef. Tonight we're making it with ground beef, a sleeve of saltine crackers, two eggs, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, ketchup, and Worcestershire sauce. Now, I used to make my meatloaf with oatmeal, but I am liking using the saltine crackers. If you've not tried it that way, definitely give it a try. It's time to push those sleeves up and get to work. I'm gonna go ahead and add the seasonings in. And of course, I dropped the lid in the meat like a true professional. <laughs> Good job, Tiffany. All right, I did not measure these. I'm guessing probably about a teaspoon and a half of the salt 
I'm, I'm sorry, of the onion powder and the garlic powder, and then probably a teaspoon of salt and pepper, but you just do you. You do whatever you think your family will like. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the eggs in. I don't know, I mean, I, do you need to do an egg dance? Probably not, but two eggs need to get in the bowl. Then go ahead and add in a half a cup of ketchup and two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Then crush up those crackers really good and add those in as well, the whole sleeve of saltine crackers. Thank goodness I remembered to take my rings off before I started mixing this meat. Now I have always heard to be gentle with ground meat, whether you're making hamburgers or whatever it is, to not overwork the meat. Meatloaf is the one thing where I'm like, get in there and mix the hound out of that meat. Get it mixed up good, and then when you make your loaf, pat it tight. We are making our loaf on the center of a baking sheet that was lined with some tinfoil, and then we are gonna cook this at 375 for about 40 or 45 minutes. Justin was in the kitchen helping me out on this night. He peeled and chopped some potatoes up to make homemade mashed potatoes. Anytime we do meatloaf, we usually always do mashed potatoes with it. I love being in the kitchen with Justin. I love cooking and spending that time together. He says I just like to tell him what to do, but I genuinely love spending that time together. Plus, he's a good cook himself. So, All right, with about 15 minutes left on the meatloaf, I pulled it out, put some extra ketchup on the top, and then let it finish cooking. And y'all, look at this. The perfect old-fashioned homemade meatloaf. We had our meatloaf with some shells and cheese, mashed potatoes, and rolls, and it was so good. Oh my goodness, it was good. All right, y'all, don't forget, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. If you're not already subscribed, hit that button. Join our family. We would love to have you. And we will see you all next time. Bye, y'all.